Hey Simonics, what's up? Welcome to a new quick win on Tinder. Well, kinda, uh, we're going to implement gestures with Ionic. So we will implement a Tinder swipe and also a long press gesture just to give you a feeling about the new gesture controller and API that's available with Ionic 5. So I've already started a blank new application. Uh, you don't have to install any packages, really just a blank new Angular application. But I already did a few changes. So what I did so far is only in these two pages uh, or these two files and that's also the only place we're going to work. So I've created a little array of people because we want to have these uh, Tinder-like uh, swipe feature. So we need a name, a little image and this will be used for our long press uh, example. So the image is just from Twitter, um, nothing special. Also, I got two helper functions here to set a background color of a card. Uh, we will see this in action later and also to just to get a hex code from a number. This is just really helping uh, functionality for what we want to do. So I would say let's get started with our view since we already got uh, the people array. And let's create a simple ion card iteration ng4 let p of people. Um, well, yeah, let's just do it in the easy way for now. Ion card header, ion card title. Hello, no code completion today. Well, thanks again. Um, the name goes to the title. And let's also use a subtitle. Um, whatever was the subtitle okay the power perhaps um so power goes here also we want to display an image uh, let's put this directly uh, at the top of our card and the source is of course the image of uh, our p uh, variable now if you hit save uh, you will first of all notice different things um, actually the images don't really fit that well and right now we got everything in a list and of course we want to have them stacked on top so what we're gonna change is um i'm just didn't want to uh put any changes into this css file so let's just do this directly in here i know perhaps not the best way but i guess you can abstract from this and um create uh the classes so we're gonna put a uh, absolute position onto each card so position absolute and we also gonna make the image cover 100% of the width. The result is that we only see one card right now and there will be cards below this so we are going to swipe them somehow to the sides. But first of all I would say that we start with the easier example which is the uh, long press. So I will create a function um, use long press since we're gonna have two of them. So we will have also uh, use Tinder swipe and you can only use one of them. So you attach a gesture using the uh, Ionic gesture controller. So we can take a quick look at this as well. Um, you have to figure out which documentation to use. So basically it's about injecting the gesture controller, which we can actually do right now. And make sure you add the import from Ionic Angular. And then you basically create a gesture with an element, perhaps threshold, the name, and then you can uh, react to on start, on move, and on end. So that's the, the basic idea of our gesture. And perhaps we will just copy this to save a bit of typing and then let's go to ng after view in it because first of all we need to access all of our uh, ionic cards and we can do this by using the view children and our view children are of the type or are the components ion card in the view and to get the right element we have to uh, specify that we want to read the element reference otherwise i think in my examples it didn't really work so this will give us a query list and if you put in ion card here you can't actually access the native element so i will just use the general type element ref that works fine as well 
So this should give us a list of all of our ion cards here, which should be three. And they're only available in the ng after view init. So I added this and also added implements after view init to my class. And there we go from the Angular core. So make sure you got this in place. Now we can first of all get the card array from our list because this is right now a query list, but we can simply call to array to get an array. And then we will call our use long press. So that's um, the first use case we wanna show. So card array, um, yeah. This one's going to expect a card array, um, just like this one. So as I said, only use one at a time and therefore I will for now comment this one out. So within our long press, we now have to apply the gesture to all of our elements and therefore we're gonna iterate over all of our uh, cards. So simple iteration, um, well, card array length um, and plus plus and then grab a reference to one card by using card array at the position this. So let's lock this out for now to see if this is actually working by now. So we should be able to get a query list of elements and we see we got all of our three element references. That's great because now we can go ahead with the thing we copied from here, uh, if you did so, or otherwise just type. Um, I don't know why I can't import the gesture. Um, that's actually strange. Um, didn't the documentation say it's there? Well, 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 it looks like it's not there. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, just a TypeScript thing. Now our element is of course the card dot native element. So that's where we wanna add the gesture. Uh, we don't really need a threshold. Let's use um, long press in here. On move isn't really interesting to us, but what's interesting is on start. So on start, we wanna do something. And also on end, we are going to do something as well. So uh, we will use a very simple idea here. We will keep a uh, long press active state here and we will set this to false. If we start pressing, we will set it to active and once we release it, we will set it to false. While it is active, we will increase the power counter. So the power counter goes up. Perhaps you could use this in different other places uh, where you wanna set a specific amount of something or anything like this. So just a simple example, long press active true. And here we are going with long press active false. Uh, what we now need to do is call a function once we start our uh, functionality here. And we need to know the index where we need to increase the power of course. And since the cards and the peoples have the same index, we can just pass it to this function. Okay, and in increase power, we will now use set timeout because we don't wanna infinitely increase the value. We just wanna um, increase it, let's say every two or 300 milliseconds. Um, in this case, uh, we could now simply go ahead with this people index um, power plus plus. The problem is, um, and then of course call our increase power again. Um, the problem is that actually the view isn't updating in that case. So we could try this now and we see nothing happens. Um, let's add a lock to see that we are actually increasing the power. So just as a little proof, um, no, we're not actually doing this right now. Uh, okay, yeah, I made the mistake that you shouldn't do. So if you create the gesture, that's not all. You also have to call gesture enable. Uh, and I think you also have to pass true to enable it, right? Uh, yes. So now 
Uh, we should be able to see it. Of course, it's not yet active. Um, all right, so for whatever reason, it didn't really work, but now you see it's increasing all the time. But that's also the problem. We're not yet stopping the increase, but it's also not uh, refreshing the value. So two problems. First of all, we only have to perform our increase if our long press is actually active and otherwise we can simply uh, leave this and the function wouldn't be called again. Now this would uh, solve the problem of stopping the long press. So you see we're going with a long press here and once I release it also stops. But the power isn't increasing. The problem right now is that uh, we need to run this code in the angular zone or call the change detection, whatever you want to do. So an easy fix for this is to inject the uh, zone ng zone from angular core and then simply move this block here out and call this zone run and now this will be observed by angular and all the changes we did inside that zone will also trigger a refresh of the value here so i'm not sure why it feels kind of hard to um actually put a button down uh, and actually get it done because uh, perhaps the absolute position isn't the best friend of the long press gesture let's try it out um well yeah now it's actually increasing the power as you can see i'm still putting my finger down once i release it it will stop and within ben sperry it should also work i don't know actually why it's working that bad i think it's because of my chrome browser because uh, when i developed this functionality actually everything went pretty smooth and there was no issue and right now I think I actually made a mistake somewhere, but I, no, I don't think it's really working. So, um, yeah, never mind. That's definitely the long press. Um, you just have to make sure that you add it to each of the elements in your view. Uh, you could, for example, like we did use the view children, or if you just want to apply it to one specific element, use view child and exit it with an ID. And then simply implement whatever you want to do on start, on move, on end, and finally call gesture enable and boom, your gesture will work. So that's it for the long press. Let's move on to um, the actual uh, Tinder swipe. So therefore I will comment out the long press and now use the Tinder swipe. We can kind of copy this code to our use Tinder swipe because we still need the card access. Um, but of course our gesture now will be a bit different. So let's call this one whatever swipe. On start we want to do something else. On end we also want to do something else. And on move we also want to do something else. So what we want to do is whenever we move the card we will move it to the left or right depending on uh, the delta of the move. So we could lock this out so we can see what's changing um i think it's already kind of enabled now so i've moved my cursor to the right and then we see that the delta x is the change of the x coordinate and if i change this back and to move it to the left we should see that this is now a negative value so we basically want to move the card based on that value and also apply a little rotation to the left or the right side. That's the idea and we're going to do this. So on move, we can call card native, um, native element, please, um, style transform. And I will just copy this because I don't want to make a typo right now. So what we're going to do is translate the x, as I said, based on the delta x value. And we can simply use this for our rotation as well. So once we do this, we should be able to see the first result. And that is moving the card to the left or moving the card to the right. And it's also rotating kind of bit. Now, of course, if we stop it here, the card is stuck. So we need to implement in the on end uh, whether we moved 
across a certain threshold and then uh, move the card out either to the right or to the left. And also if it's not above the threshold, we will move back the card to center. So uh, on end, um, oh, I forgot the set card color. So let's just, this was just a quick idea I had on the fly because we used this in the past. For example, you could also change a bit the tint color of the native element based on the Delta X. So this is really nothing you have to do. I just wanted to show that it would be possible based on a value to set the background color to some red color or some green color, whatever you prefer, or in general, perhaps fade the image or do any kind of tricky thing. Um, back to what I wanted to say. So on end, um, on end, we are basically performing an animation. So therefore we should actually use a transition uh, time and uh, you can put in whatever you want, of course, um, but it shouldn't be instant. So if the event Delta X is now above, let's say 150 or let's also use else if it's below um, minus 100, Oh, that looks strange, <laughs> minus 150, uh, or otherwise it's just normal. Actually, the normal case is the most easy one, since in that case, uh, we're just going back to no transformation at all. So this means uh, we're not above the threshold, and as you can see, we're moving the card simply back to the center of the original or the original position. Um, perhaps we could also call set, no, uh, whatever. Let's don't mind the color for now. I can also comment this out. It was just a, a funny thing I wanted to do. Sorry if you don't like it, just leave it out. Um, next thing might be a bit more complicated because um, we need to translate the position now out of the view. And to get the full view width, you can actually inject the private platform because that makes life kind of easy and then using the platform we can now transform our value out and it looks like this we're using um remember we're moving it to the right side now uh, along the x axis um, we're just shifting it out completely beyond the width of the view and we're also adding a little more rotation because it shouldn't fly out like this it should basically bounce out and now for the opposite direction i think it's kind of the same but we want to use minus in this case and the rest can stay the same so this should help us now to see uh we're still in the threshold now we're beyond the threshold and if you make this a bit slower the transition let's just add three and a half seconds really you shouldn't do it like this in your application but now you should see it still rotates out. So we get this full uh, animation. It really rolls out. And of course, this is now too slow. So going back, this was just an example. Okay, I think we added everything. We got the long press, which uh, doesn't really work in combination. So I think right now you can only add one gesture for one element, although I think it's kind of strange, but um, thinking about it right now, this is also a long press. Since I moved this element, uh, this wouldn't really work well. Um, you can react to on start, on move, on end, and use the values of the gesture that you performed. So. I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to the gesture API of Ionic 5. Um, if you've got questions about this API or want to see certain other gestures, just leave a comment and I'm happy to produce more on this since I really enjoyed working with the gestures. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your app faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding.
Simon. <laughs>